Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. I've been listening to some Bach lately, which some of you may know I don't do a lot of. In fact, I very foolishly began the Bach Cantata Schlepp, which I will be schlepping through for the rest of my life, probably never finishing. And I kind of stalled at five titles because I just couldn't take the poetry. I mean, I knew it was coming, but having it all in a clump like that, you know, I have to slow it down. So it's been going very slowly ever since. In the meantime, I've been taking my Bach in smaller doses, and I was listening recently to his Lutheran Masses, or Missae Breve, Short Masses. These are marvelous pieces. They are some of the least known of all of Bach's choral works, largely because, and for me this is a good thing, all of the music, almost almost all of it, except for a couple numbers, derives from the cantatas. So you get like great music from the cantatas without having to deal with the texts of the cantatas, which for me is 100% a plus. The text of the mass, of course, is just a marvelous blank slate, which, I mean, it affords some opportunities for, you know, wonderful emotional expression, of course, you know, having mercy and glory and resurrections and crucifixions. I mean, there's plenty of stuff in there for a composer to work on, but the text is known. It's not like horrifying for the most part. And, and you know, you can do anything you want with it. So Bach took his cantatas and took some of the best numbers from various of them. And he made these four missae breve. Now, what does breve mean? <clears throat> in this case, excuse me. In this case, they are not for the Catholic rite, of course, so they consist only of a Kyrie and a Gloria, and that's it. You don't have to deal with the Credo, which is usually a good thing because that's the wordiest, and and aside from the crucifixion and resurrection, it's the least musically uh, sort of uh, opportunistic text in the entire Mass. Um, and so we have these lovely pieces, which most even Bach scholars tended to, to look down on because they were parodies. Parody meaning you take a previous setting and you set it to new words. That's a parody. We're not talking about parody like ha 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 parody. Not that at all. In music, that's what it is. And they're lovely. And I have this recording of all four of them. I mean, I have several recordings of all of them, but, but this is with the 16 under Harry Christopher's, it's done with very small forces, only two voices per part in the choruses, and, you know, in a tiny little orchestra. And, of course, you know, we can have our debate over what Bach may have intended or how it works or how it doesn't work. All I know is this. They're very beautifully sung here. I mean, it's true. Some of the bigger numbers could probably do with, you know, beefing up the choral forces a little bit more, but I, I can't complain. I really can't. These are lively and lovely performances. But even more to the point here, and one of the nicest things about this set is that it's on two discs, and sandwiched in between each of the masses, they're in G major, F major, G major, and A major, in case you're curious, and their BWV numbers are what? 233 through 236, right? Three, four, five, six, yes, that gives you four of them. You get two of the cantatas from which a lot of the numbers derive. So you can listen to the cantata versions and you can listen to the mass versions. And this may be more for people who are really interested in like a little musical detective work, but I love that sort of thing. I think it's so cool. One of the most wonderful things about Bach is his ability to transform things into other things. As if the previous thing had never existed, you would never know. But um, he does it all the time, usually with his own music, rather than with other people's music, like Handel or some other people did. But the cantatas are, <clears throat> here we go. Let's see. Herr, deine Augen schen nach dem Glauben. Catchy, of course. And Gott, der Herr, ist Sonn und Schild. Yeah, Schild. These are not dismal cantatas for the most part. I mean, you know, you could look at the words here if we're curious. And uh, let's see. Uh, one of the nice things about this set, by the way, is that you get fabulous notes, a beautiful booklet, and the booklet gives you all the texts and translations, even repeating the text of the Mass where it needs to be, to let you know who does what, 
how Bach lays it out between chorus and soli and whatnot. It's really a beautifully put together little production on the Coro label, which is the 16's own label, C-O-R-O, in case you're curious. But let's see. Lord, your eyes look for faith. You strike them, but they do not feel it. You torment them. Oh, well, okay, so it's a little dismal. Um, but they do not improve themselves. Their face is set harder than stone. They are not willing to be converted. Oh, well, so much for that theory. Um, yeah, I, I just ignore the words because... Uh, but then we have the other one. It's got to be nicer. It has to be. It just has to be. Wait a second. Volume two. Uh, yes, here we are. God, their hair is the zone and shield. God, the Lord, is sun and shield. Yeah, I know. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing he withholds from the righteous. Yay! You see, we got at least one sort of sweet, nice one, and one that isn't dealing with punishment and pain and suffering and whatnot. Anyway, these are marvelous performances of lovely, lovely, lovely works. And if you do not know these pieces, um, I really strongly recommend that you give them a shot. And this is an awfully good way to get to know them. It really, really is. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.